and then wrap the entire area with cellophane wrap or get a shirt that's about two sizes too small. Vigor Steve here with a very old home remedy to reduce post-injection pain that actually works. Cabbage leaf wraps. It's a total freebie and probably already heard about this in a different context, but it will work to get that inflammatory post-injection pain under control and prevent you from limping all over the place. Now, traditionally, cabbage leaf wraps have been used to reduce the engorgement of breasts after mothers are done breastfeeding their children, in which case cabbage leaves are able to relieve pain, reduce swelling, and mitigate some of the inflammation which occurs after breastfeeding is discontinued. Cabbage leaf wraps are also used to mitigate some of the pain in the knees, elbows, or shoulders following a sports injury. And this potent effect of reducing inflammation is also very practical when you're suffering from severe post-injection pain. Now, when you look at post-injection pain, of course, it can be caused by many different things. Did you inject a testosterone suspension or another suspension, for example, which might crystallize in the injection depot and cause a tremendous amount of inflammation, in which case a cabbage leaf wrap will certainly work to mitigate some of this inflammation and reduce the swelling and the pain which come along with that injection. But if you're suffering from an actual infection, you would still need to go through the route of antibiotics in the form of Keflex or Augmentum. It should still be able to mitigate some of the swelling and the inflammation which occurs following a steroid infection. You continue to use these cabbage leaf wraps while you're finishing the antibiotics course to ultimately resolve this infection which is present in your body. Just keep in mind, if the infection turns septic or it forms a sterile abscess, in both cases, you need to get that drained. And also keep in mind that cabbage leaves by themselves don't potentiate any antimicrobial or antibacterial effects. So you still need to do concurrent therapy to resolve particular issues related to the post-injection pain. Now, it's highly beneficial to mitigate some of the post-injection pain and inflammation following an administration with synthetic carrier oil. And the reason why I never mentioned this to you guys is because, well, the bottom line is you shouldn't be using synthetic carrier oil. So I didn't want to give you a solution to fix that issue. Still, if you happen to end up in a scenario where you administered synthetic carrier oil or you don't have any other choice, and well, let's be honest here, you always have the choice not to inject that poison and throw it away instead. Nobody's forcing you to inject this synthetic carrier oil, which ultimately results in a tremendous amount of inflammation. And otherwise, take it from me. I switched to pharmaceutical grade many years ago. And guess what? I haven't had the need to use cabbage leaf wraps myself to mitigate inflammation because there hasn't been any. And that's why I don't have a prop in the form of an actual cabbage. Um, so you're going to have to use your imagination. On that topic, how to apply cabbage leaf wraps, it's reasonably straightforward. You get one of the leaves, you clean that, and then you apply that with pressure at the site where you're experiencing tremendous post-injection pain or inflammation, swelling, or perhaps a little bit of redness. Again, if there's redness, there might be an infection occurring and you need to administer Keflex and Augmentum to get that under control ASAP. So let's say I would have a lot of inflammation in the shoulders. Following a bad injection, I would take one of the leaves, ideally one that fits over the shoulder entirely, put that in place, and then wrap the entire area with cellophane wrap or get a shirt that's about two sizes too small. Ideally with a fabric that's highly stretchy, like a combination of polyester with lycra or polyester with spandex, for example, it should be stretchy enough, but tight enough to keep that cabbage leaf wrap in place in areas where you can't really use cellophane wrap to hold that tightly because you want direct contact between the cabbage leaves and your skin, allowing for the ingredients within the cabbage leaf to potentiate their anti-inflammatory effects and get that swelling down as fast as possible. Now, depending on the severity of the inflammation, most people would notice relief within 24 hours up to 48 hours, in which case most of the effects seems to get less and less and less. Ideally, you change that cabbage leaf every four to six hours or so, get a fresh new leaf that's cleaned, put that in the compression area, and then let that reduce the inflammation further. Again, most symptoms will go away within 24 to 48 hours. But as of now, most researchers don't exactly know why cabbage leaf wraps seem to be so effective in reducing inflammation, whether that's in engorged breasts, the tendonitis and problems of the knees, for example, 
or in this case, a severe post-injection pain. Some of the researchers speculate that this potent anti-inflammatory effect of cabbage might come from the anthocyanins, which are present in red and green cabbages. Now, anthocyanins have very potent antioxidant, anti-inflammatory effects, and they also have some anti-cancer and anti-obesity properties. Now, red cabbage contains a much higher concentration of anthocyanins compared to green cabbage. It is also of note that red cabbage might stain the skin because it contains almost 10 times the amount of vitamin A compared to green cabbage. So when you look at a nutrient perspective comparing red cabbage to green cabbage, red cabbage has more nutrients, more vitamin A, more anthocyanins compared to green cabbage. But in its practical application, from my personal experience mitigating post-injection pain in the past, using either red cabbage or green cabbage or discussing this with some of my clients who use this particular practice of cabbage leaf wraps, there's no real difference. So whether you use a red cabbage or green cabbage, both of them are potent enough to reduce the inflammation within 24 to 48 hours and should offer a tremendous amount of relief depending on the severity of the post-injection pain and the inflammation that you're experiencing. So from my personal experience, there's no real difference between both these different cabbages. But I will say that the anthocyanins content of cabbage is rather low compared to some of the other foods which are otherwise rich in anthocyanins. Red cabbage contains 150 milligrams anthocyanins per 100 grams. For green cabbage, that's currently unknown. I wasn't able to find that. I would assume that it's lower based on its micronutrient profile comparing red to green cabbage. But when you compare that to black beans, for example, which already contain 213 milligrams anthocyanins per 100 grams, significantly higher. A kai berry contains 410 milligrams. Aronia chokeberry, 1500 milligrams anthocyanins per 100 grams and then black chow berry contains a whopping 4180 milligrams anthocyanins per 100 grams that's four percent of its actual content being anthocyanins but what we currently don't know is if these food sources with a significantly higher anthocyanin content have a more potent anti-inflammatory effect in the cases of reducing engorgement following breastfeeding or mitigating some of the pain and swelling when there's an injury to the knees, shoulders, or elbows. And in our case, mitigation of post-injection pain and the inflammation which occurs at the site of administration. We don't really know that. Feel free to give that a try. Feel free to make your own acai paste or chokeberry paste or um, a black chowberry paste with, well, 4% anthocyanins and then wrap that in a cellophane wrap apply it at the site where you have a lot of post-injection pain and see if that's more beneficial to reduce the inflammation compared to red or green cabbage leaves. I want to leave you with four different studies for your own research on your own free time. The first study is called Dietary Anthocyanins Against Obesity and Inflammation. Second study is titled Cabbage Leaf Wraps in the Treatments of Symptomatic Osteoarthritis of the Knee. Third study is called Effects of Cabbage Leaves on the Reduction of Post-Traumatic knee exudates in men. And the fourth one is more of a publication titled Cabbage Leaf Can Help the Inflammation of Any Body Part. Give these four studies slash publications a read in case you're still on the fence on using a cabbage leaf wrap to reduce post-injection pain. I'm sure you'll be able to convince yourself. And again, it's a super easy freebie. You go to the grocery store, you get the biggest cabbage you can find with nice, thick, juicy leaves. You peel those off, you clean them, you apply them with pressure at the site where you're experiencing the most post-injection pain. Leave them on for 24 to 48 hours, albeit that you need to change the leaves every four to six hours or so, ideally, to potentiate the most amount of anti-inflammatory effects. Very cheap, very easy, and whatever cabbage you don't use, you can always make yourself a salad after the post-injection pain is gone. I'll leave you with that. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're looking for the most comprehensive guides to bodybuilding pharmacology, you can find the ebooks on my website at vigorsteve.com shop. Personalized advice always available through consultations. You can find the rates in the consultation section. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok at vigorsteve. Have a look at my new workout clips channel called Vigors to the Max. Link down below. Have a look at my link tree as well with all the over-the-counter supplements XYZ that I frequently mention in my YouTube channels. I'm sure there's a link and discount code for it with all my very reliable sponsors and affiliates that I've been working with for a very, very, very long time. And for the Vigorous Crew, a front double bicep for you guys, always at the end of each and every video. Maybe not as big as a real green cabbage, but right, the detail 
certainly is there. All right, that's enough flexing on camera. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next video.